Okay, good morning, everyone. So thanks for joining my session today. So uh, I'm Kevin Zhao from Leonardo. And uh, this presentation was being uh, previously a uh, co-speaker by me and Xin Liang. But uh, due to some reason, he cannot be here. So I will take this presentation today. So uh, uh, I want to elaborate some HPC storage status on the ARM64 environment, so especially the, uh, the, on the ARM64 servers. And first, yeah, so I want to do a simple introduction about Lenaro. So uh, Lenaro is an a open source organization who works with uh, the business and open source community to develop the soft software on the ARM-based technology. So uh, from us, we are a collaboration organizations by, uh, with, with our ARM and is uh, another uh, some semiconductor vendors, uh, generally the ARM and its customers. Yeah, because un unlike the x86, the manufacturer, the, CP, uh, the CPU was being manufactured by Intel or AMD themselves. So for ARM, is, so ARM offered the IP model and uh, the different CPU vendors will uh, offer the CPUs, so that th there would be a very in potential opportunity for the collaborations between the ARM and the other ARM64 um, uh, CPU and uh, uh, semiconductor companies. Yeah, we, we have some low-level software, uh, low-level software collaborations. So that we have founded this, uh, we have actually ARM and its uh, partners has founded this. Uh, a company from 20 to 2010, and uh, now we are actually in the last Linux, uh, Linux upstream, the 6.2, we are the top one uh, Linux contributions, yeah. So today, so my talk is uh, generally uh, very simple, and uh, I want to give some brief update on, on our, our work on the HPC file system support on, on the ARM server side. So uh, I will briefly introduce why we do this and what we, ha what we have planned and also give some update for the other three projects for the Luster, DELS, and BGFS. So we can see that for in the HPC world, there are generally two simple, uh, two famous ranking lists. So the top 500 and the IO 500. So for top 500, we can see that uh, uh, it is really to see the ARM servers, even though that the Fujitsu Fukaku has been ranking in the top one for maybe one or two years, but uh, we can really to see more. And in the IO 500, the problem is even worse. So we can see that in the top 100, there is no ARM environment. So that's why, yeah. The problem we observe that is, one, one big problem is the backend file system, the backend storage, support on ARM has not been well supported. Yeah, because so in the HPC area, it is a, a generally dedicated area, and it has been dominated by some open source, uh, open source project, but that, that one has not been well supported. So that we, why we address this problem. So we can see, so we choose why Luster, Dell, and BGFS. Yeah, because so in the top 100, we observe that Around f around half of the top top 100 top 100 in the IO 500, they are using the open source solution, the Luster, Dells, and BGFS as their backend file system. And to address to fill this gap, so we have set up an open project. It is a collaboration project that we have called collaboration with ARM and uh, High Silicon. Uh, um, so here I listed the, the a project page. You can you, you can see more details project. Uh, Information here, and uh, uh, in, in this project, we are uh, doing the engineering work, the open source enablement, and uh, the optimizations uh, for three dedicated areas. So the first one is HPC file system. Uh, I will elaborate today, and uh, the other two is a traditional storage file system. So mostly we are co-work with the Ceph upstream to support the Ceph ARM64, and also the cloud native storage. Yeah, so. We have done some cloud native storage ones, for example, the Maya Store, and also the Rook, yeah, to support the to enrich the ARM ecosystem. Yeah. So, and also, if you have some more questions uh, in the storage status on ARM, yeah, to f please feel free to post the information on the open discussion list. Yeah. So, yeah. So, first one, Luster. Uh, 
generally introduce Luster is Luster is a, a framework with the client and server. So the back end, uh, the, there's a background for Luster is, so uh, Luster client on ARM was being already supported several years ago. So that it means that you can use the uh, Luster client to connect it with a remote Luster cluster, which will be all, which can be offered by the x86 backend storage. And uh, those one has already been adopted into the AWS uh, service. So now the AWS has uh, offered the Luster client ARM64 uh, services now. But the server side, they support uh, are just finished by Linaro and the Luster community. So I will give more discussions, uh, give, give more upgrade here. So in the server side, it's generally running the metadata service, the management service, and uh, the object store, object store service, yeah. So the first is uh, ARM64 support and CI. So th that one has been actually already finished by Linaro and the and Luster, up, Luster upstream. So if you want to try the ARM64 Luster server and also the Luster client, we have already offered the ARM support and you can go to the Luster, Luster download and the main page will redirect it to the Linaro repo. Yeah. And we've also set up the Luster ARM64 builder and the CI. It is a daily running CI which has been maintained by in, in our data center. So, uh, and uh, I will introduce more in the CI side. Yeah. So the CI side, yeah, th th this is a very simple, uh, simple, precise. So I just uh, go, go, go through uh, simply. Yeah, so just uh, grab and building every day and uh, up upload the RPMs to the right repo, yeah. And the other one is a, is a follow-up for the builder CI is a testing CI. So for t testing CIs, uh, the process need be, uh, usually using the three phrase, three phrase. And we use the Terraform and OpenStack to provision the cluster every day, install configuration and running the Luster, Luster testing. And then after that, so we will uh, post the Luster, uh, the, the testing data to the MongoDB. The, the MongoDB is maintained by Luster upstream, so it, this is a panel for the different uh, different developers uh, to see the uh, CI, CI status. So that would be very nice for the developers and users to see the current status and uh, address different problem. Yeah. And this is the test suite. That one, yeah, yeah. So I just uh, leave some information here for test suite because the Luster has been already into production for uh, maybe more than 15 years, right? So and it has uh, developed a lot of the test suite to cover different scenario. So the 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 top the top four, yeah, was a basic function test suite. And uh, for the regressions, the uh, multi client and the concurrency, and uh, the failure recoveries, and also there are a configuration and deployment test suite. Those one, uh, actually before we, we have uh, fixed a lot of the bugs for test suite to make sure that the Luster server can work well. And uh, actually this work has still work in progress and uh, we, have, uh, we still need to identify more issues in the test suite. Yeah, because so there are usually more than 2,000 test suites uh, uh, for, for simple testing run every day, so that this work has this still work in progress. And uh, so last year, what we, it has a, a style that uh, previously it, it was developed a lot of the sanity-related testing for the basic function. And also, uh, in the following years, last year wanted to address the more uh, new new classes of the sorry the new storage class for example the SSD the NVMe so that it has also support uh, some new features for example I see here uh, at least here is a uh, hierarchical storage management the file level redundancy and also the persistent client cache so that one uh, also for the for the dedicated new feature Luster community also write a new 
new class, uh, a new suite to cover these different features. So that uh, in this, uh, we call advanced features. Uh, we, we can also observe some ARM64 failures, but uh, fortunately, we have fixed almost all of them, but still need to, need to address more. So I live here about the remaining issue. And yeah, so this is a critical bug fix for a yeah, critical one here, that is a uh, crash or cluster home. We can obviously very easily to see that uh, the, the kernel ops or the, uh, or the testing homes in the, for the generally running in the Luster server on the, uh, on the ARM64. So we have sort of the priorities here and uh, and also, so uh, the top three of the crash are generally related with maybe the uh, the data structure alignment, which is different with ARM64 and x86. Yeah. So the other one is a 6K 64K page related. Yeah, because uh, this one, uh, the 60K page size is a uh, is. I don't know if it's clear is that uh, th this is only introduced in the ARM architecture and usually in the x86, the 4K page is, uh, is what quite popular and previously in the ARM ecosystem, the CentOS, CentOS 8 has using the 6K, 64K page as a by default so that some of the software need to doing, some of the upper layer software need to doing some Called change to other to adjust this so that uh, in Luster it is a kernel uh, it, it is a kernel mode uh, file system right so it also has tried to support the 64k page size and uh, also Luster introduced a page size transition a tr page size translation uh, between the 4k page server in the x86 and the 6k 64k page client on the ARM. Uh, on the ARM server, uh, ARM client side. So it has actually reintroduced some new problem. I live here for the strapped directory and also the red stock. So that we have also fixed this. But uh, uh, from uh, our point of view, we don't now to advise the user to use the 64K page in the future because currently now most of the operation system in ARM architecture side, so the CentOS 9, so the Ubuntu, and uh, you know, so in China is that there's another one called OpenEULA, so they have used it, they have changed back to 4K page size now, yeah. And the last one is the OpenZFS. Uh, the, open, the, the OpenZFS is a backend file system which has been leveraged by Luster uh, in the server side for the metadata service the, and also the OSS. Uh, we we found that the, op, uh, the 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 OpenZFS checksum algorithm. This, this is the by default the open the features here. Uh, it be a hot point, and uh, the performance is not very better uh, for their previously neon neon support. So that we have uh, doing our optimizations to increase the, the performance about thirty percent. Yeah, after the enablement, the new problem here is a IO500 test. So we have using the we have using the uh, traditional configuration for ten node. So the file server and file client. Yeah. So after we increase the high concurrency for Luster, we observe some new problem. It's still the critical one. Yeah. So, so which induce the kernel knobs. So I list it here. Um, those one were actually dedicated with the ARM architecture. So if you have more information, you can come to this link uh, to see more information. And uh, the last three ones was related with the configurations. Uh, for the OpenZFS backend, we observed the OMQ. And, uh, and also for the testing, we have also testing the environment for when you run a MDT test and then using Control-C 
to destroy the cluster. And we observe our obviously CPU software lockup. And after that, we, we have solved this problem by changing the RPC, and we found that the problem is RPC configurations. <coughs> so we have changed and uh, recommended the information here. And also, uh, another one is using MPIL to exist the, the L500 test yeah, to, to try to achieve more uh, regular testing and a better performance. Also, so we have fixed some more testing switch issues. Yeah, much of them are related with the hard coded, hard coded or page size page size issues in the last testing switch because previously that one was dedicatedly designed for the x86. Yeah. So uh, there are still some more testing switch issues for the, the recovery, the, piece, the persistent clan cache, and something else we are still working on. Yeah. And uh, for Luster, the last part is uh, open EULA support. So the reason why I, I listed here for open EULA is uh, it is uh, another uh, operation system which is quite popular now in China. Uh, and. Uh, now it's a 35% margins in the China, Chinese uh, in the Chinese market this year, and uh, for Luster upstream, previously we offered packages for the CentOS 8 stream, and we want to have a more stable operation system, and we want to uh, leave uh, leave the Luster as a uh, make the make the Luster. Uh, to be available with uh, with uh, so-called uh, uh, can support operation system seek, so that we have collaboration with the Open EULA SDS seek and uh, maintain offering the package and uh, maintain the package. Also, we will also pass the luster uh, pass the pass the luster testing. Uh, according to the Open EULA release schedule, yeah. So now we we finished the last client support in Open EULA and uh, continue finish the server support on Open EULA. Uh, by supporting this side, because Open EULA uh, LTS twenty dot zero three are offer the five point ten kernel Linux kernel, which is quite different with CentOS eight. So that we've also backport the uh, the Luster LDiskFS patches on the uh, on the LDiskFS, so that to support the 5.10 kernels, and also this work was being uh, finished by by Linaro and the, the Luster upstream. Also, the dependencies, yeah. So because so previously we we are testing the Luster on CentOS, so on CentOS side they open the open ZFS and also the E2 file system progs. So it e has a progress. Those one was already being supported on the CentOS, but that one has not been supported on Open EULA. So even though Open EULA is an RPM-based uh, uh, file system, uh, sorry, it, uh, uh, even though the Open EULA is an RPM-based operation system, so that uh, we've done the build support for OpenZFS and also the E2 file system progs in the Open EULA to make sure that the Luster server and client support can be addressed in the Open EULA. And uh, this one will be released uh, on January 13, if I remember right, in the Open EULA 20.03 LTS SP2. Yeah. Uh, here is the uh, engineering work, so I don't want to go through very, very detailly, but uh, our, uh, our target to move to Open EULA is the uh, last version 2.15, 2.15.x stable release. And next, next one is, uh, uh, the first top priority for us is uh, switch the last CI to 4K. Yeah, because uh, when we are work previously was a CentOS, based on CentOS 8 on running the daily test, we find more issues, which would be introduced more complex to to support the Luster on open to, to support the support the Luster on ARM64 servers. So, and uh, we will talk with different community and upstream, 
and uh, also the customer side, much of them are does not have quite interest on 64K page, so that we will move to 4K page to solve the problem. And the other one is uh, continue to fill in the last ARM 64 test suite. Yeah, so there are still less than 15 test issues we're trying to fix. And then DELS. DELS is a, uh, it's a so the so-called distributed asynchronized object storage. So this one was previously by supported by Intel, right? So Intel has uh, has uh, promoted these solutions basically for their for their uh, non-volatile memory, not only the NVMe but also the SCM, the storage class memory. But so unfortunately, we know that Intel has dropped all, has dropped the business of opt-in. But uh, the Dell substream currently now is, is still there, and also is a is a popular priorities uh, for the Intel in HPC world because uh, because the common server uh, in, in the HPC market, Intel also want to propose the solutions for their server with NVMe and the future their server with, for example, the 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 uh, CHL or the UCIE based uh, memory, right? Dell's now previously was designed to have a very good, very, very good APIs and the, the data structures with the AI workflow, and also uh, and also the big data workflow. Yeah. Here, I listed the Dell's, Dell's public community roadmap. Because so, uh, some of our uh, community members find also have this problem is if the Dells will continue to live, uh, be, uh, even though uh, the Intel has dropped, uh, dropped the opt-in business. So, and we can see that uh, uh, from the Dells to Dawn 4, the, the, the upstream has planned to move their data, data, metadata management service from their persistent memory to the NVMEs first, yeah, because uh, Intel has had dropped the the opt-in, the story class memory, uh, but uh, they still want to make sure that th those projects are now be bonding with the opt-in memories, <coughs> and those work will be finished maybe one one years, are, uh, around the two two Dell's versions, and in the future we can see that. Uh, the upstream has a uh, pay attention on the CHL or, or UCA based uh, memories. Yeah, because those, those one was uh, quite popular technologies in the future for the storage. So what, what do we have done for the Dells on ARM64? Yeah. So first one is a build, right? So that was a Intel based uh, uh, Intel controlled community, right? But they are open to uh, to support more architectures, so that we'll cover with them to support the, to fix the data structure check issue, uh, the SPDK build, and also a decouple uh, dependency for the IPM control. So this tool is uh, the IPM control is a uh, uh, persistent memory control libraries. So those one can only running on Intel side, right? And other some very simple supported uh, and other the DOP packages and the, and the, the telemetry. So after that, the DELS has supported build and run, uh, build on ARM64. Uh, so since the DELS 2.3 version, yeah. And also we've set up the DELS CI. The DELS CI is, uh, now has been included the two builders for RPM one for OpenSUSE Lib and the Alma Linux one. Uh, the DEB builder is running for the Ubuntu 20.0, uh, 22.04. And also, we've set up the node local testing CIs to doing the landing testing uh, after each patch merge. Yeah. So, in the red picture is the landing test build. We can see that uh, it, it will be running, uh, it, it will be running after each of the PR merges. And if you have more information, so we have run a, uh, we have write a wiki in the in the, in the Dell's uh, wiki side to re to record more information. And yeah, so the L500. 
So those one would be even tricky for the Dells on ARM64 because uh, we don't have the persistent memory on ARM, and uh, we have one. Uh, the all we have is the first is the NVMN, uh, the the NVDMN is a uh, memory with a disk with a battery, right? So this one cannot be a very big very big capabilities, yeah. And also for the testing, for for the testing convenient, we're using the map uh, we're using the real memory to emulate the the ICM. That me that mechanism has been official supported to make sure that testing will, will be simple. Uh, so that has introduced a problem I listed uh, in, in the last part. So the first one, is, and the other one is a remaining issue is a 60, 64K page size crash. So we have not fixed this, and uh, and uh, after some debugging, we found that uh, it will be a tricky issue, and also some of, and much of the customers now are, does not have the 64K page in, interest to, so that we will just live there, so yeah. But for 4K page, it is supported well. And the IO500 exception ex uh, exists. It's much about the capabilities of, of our emulation because the memory emulated SAM is capability is very small. And for DELS, it has previously supported and uh, suited for the big size storage class memory. And uh, usually, it, it will store the small block less than 4K and to to the SCM by default, and also it will also uh, for each target, it will also uh, allocate the memories, uh, the 2G memory SCM and the 10G NVMe. But it will be very easy to consume all the SCM, so that we, we, we can very easily observe the uh, IO500 exist. So after changing those two, we can observe the. Uh, we can get a valid result after changing this. Yeah. So after changing this, we can get a comparative performance on some M64 servers compared with x86. x86. And the last but not least is the BGFS. Uh, the BGFS one, we've done something. The first is uh, address the very critical issues on the ARM V9.2 version, CPUs, uh, and the copy to user, copy from copy to user. So that one is bound to, is related with two ARM, uh, two ARM features called PAN and UAO, yeah. So, so the, the time is limited, so I don't want to br brief very detailed detail introduction, but all the information has been re related, has been recorded in the BGFS 7.3 release note, yeah. So, so now from the BGFS 7.3, the ARM supported has been officially announced. And we've covered with HiSilicon and SimpleQ uh, to doing the performance evolutions to run the IO500 test on ARM with the NVMe and InfiniBand. And also we, ha we can get some better performance with the parameters changing and the, the newer tunings, yeah. So, or detailed information, we published the uh, performance evolution by papers. So, yeah, it would be very easy to get the more information if you have more interest, yes. Yeah, so that is all my presentation for today. So, any questions? Any questions? Okay. Thank you all for joining the session today. Yeah, yeah. Have a good day. Thank you.